can't. The Lord says, you do this. You do this. You need to do this. Okay. And he'll provide. He's our provider. Amen. 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 You got anything I see? You have your finger in a couple spots. I'm right, just holding my Bible. <laughs> I'm glad you're holding your Bible. <laughs> Well, let's give him some praise. Amen. Yes. reminding me today, guys, too, is it's, I think it's Psalm 46, verse 11. Verse 11? Yeah. Verse 10. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this. Where are we at? Psalm 46, 10. 46, 10. Okay. 11. Be, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Mm -hmm. In this day and time, I'm taking over. I'm so sorry. I'm not. I said, don't no apologize. Yeah. <laughs> in this day and time we can get so caught up with what's going on politically what's going on socially what's going on and it's like Lord you are still God mm -hmm. be still and know I am God be still and know I've reached a point of work that I'm kind of if someone brings up <clears throat> something like socially or something, it's like, no, I'm just not getting into it anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be still and know. How are people going to be drawn to our life? Mm -hmm. How are people going to be drawn to our life? If we're sitting there angry and upset, blah, 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 that doesn't draw people to our life. <clears throat> we're standing still. We're standing still and knowing that He indeed is God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And He indeed draws people to Him. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. We're the ones, we're responsible to plant seeds. Yeah. We're the ones responsible for our walk. They eat seeds. Whether the Lord might have a word for me to say to someone sometime, we're praying for you. We're praying for you. That might just be the right seed that they need. Someone cares about me. Someone cares about me. Or I don't want prayer. I'm not going to pray. 
you know, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Be still and know. Yes. He speaks to us in a still, small voice. Amen. 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 Well, those of you that are watching on the internet, we welcome you and thank you for <coughs> coming in and viewing. Uh, we know there's several choices out there mm -hmm. that you have, but God led you to us yeah. for a reason, for a purpose. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we'd like you to go. We're pastors Ray and Jean Snow. Mm -hmm. We'd like you to go to theriversfc.org and uh, you can check us out on the website. You can use that also to go to Facebook and uh, you can also find us mm -hmm. with that same avenue uh, and... and on uh, YouTube and Twitter. Instagram. No, Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> we're, we're social. And we're so social, I don't even know how social we are. <laughs> you know? uh, You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And, and to You're tell you the truth, that was these young people. That's their job. Is All right. Yeah. That's what you guys, your job to do is straighten me up on this stuff. So uh, that's what they're doing. Uh, and I've been but, getting off social media for a while anyway. <laughs> so we're having fun at doing this, yes, and and if you're here local, you should be here with us, mm -hmm. yes. because we have fun in this place. Yes, yes we do. Okay? Yeah, we have a spiritual time. God, God shows up, yep. and, and it seems like it's different degrees every time He shows mm -hmm. up. It's different. Well, it's kind of like when we can do communion. I tell everybody, when you break that wafer, everybody's wafer looks different. Why? Because we all need something different. Yes. God shows up different every time. Mm -hmm. And it's not that he hasn't left you, it's that we become more open to what he's doing mm -hmm. and receptive as to what he's doing. Amen. And it seems like that's what that's the whole idea behind getting a group of people together is because we all of a sudden become more receptive. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's true. Yeah. That's the way it was designed in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I've had people argue with me about that, and I say, give me scripture verse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give me scripture verse where God says that you're supposed to be all by yourself. Mm -hmm. There's not one in here. Just like, just like I had a conversation with somebody yesterday on Facebook. He, you know, he mentioned that no, God, when God tells you no, it's just a redirection. I said, "Where in the Bible? Is, what scripture is it where God's telling you no?" And so he personal messaged me so it wouldn't show up on his links on his post. So he personal messaged me. Well, God really doesn't tell you no. I said, no, let me correct you there, too. He doesn't tell you no. The problem is, is you receive the no in and of yourself yeah. because you're wanting to do something that God has no plans for you to do. The Holy Spirit's leading you another way, and you think that's a no. God didn't tell you no. He doesn't tell us no. I don't he says to everything is yes and amen. You can go there, you can go there, yeah. Yeah. He says everything's yes and amen. He puts the desires in your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's not a no in there. There's not a no in yes and amen. And he says you can do all things through him who strengthens you. You can do all things. Did you know that you can I'm getting off on something that's not even in my nose. But you can get out you, you can get into doing something that it's not God's total will for you to do, but because you believe that you have the power and the authority behind, you know, from him behind you. That you can still accomplish it? Yeah. It's called faith. Yes. Because you can you can put your faith out there for something that you're not even supposed to do. Yeah. And 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 still have power to to mold and shape it. Yeah. I'll give you a world sense of it. Your faith, you know, we all did it in school. When we were in school, we found out that there was a test or a quiz happening and we weren't prepared for it. Oh, I didn't feel good. And we start telling ourselves, we don't feel good. So, so that power got behind, that worldly power, our fleshly power got behind it. And, and in our faith, we willed ourselves to be sick. And we went home knowing that we had a quiz to come back to the next day. We all did it. When we, were, when we first moved back to Washington State, we came back thinking that, uh, in looking at possibly starting a church over in the Bremerton area. We were going to help uh, a friend of ours. In fact, it's our regional director. He was starting a church there. He had a large group of people that were driving to Tacoma from Bremerton wow. to go to church. And so we uh, we thought that that's what we were supposed to do. We this was in 1990. 
And we, we felt it in our hearts that we were supposed to do that. So we came back to Washington State, thinking that we were supposed to do that. Got involved with the church up there and everything. And, and in fact, uh, they needed a youth group. We, I had 20 kids as part of the youth group. We started a youth group. We almost had more youth than we had adults wow. in the service. And uh, and I told him, I said, you know, I said, Jan, you, you teach great. You're a great teacher. I love listening to you. I, I, teenagers don't like it. <laughs> and he just looked at me and said, okay, what should I do? I said, let me start a youth group. All right, go ahead. You know, and that's all I said. And then I, I went, you know, we started one and, and, and God used us. And we started doing things. And, and we were praying about, okay, is this where we're supposed to be? Is this what we're supposed to do? Is this where we're supposed to be? And another couple at the same time, uh, they, they were praying about it. But God was talking to them that they were supposed to step forward and do it. And we felt that we were supposed to. But they didn't step into that spot where God wanted them. It's almost like we were the, I, I want to say the B plan for God. But our faith kept us in that, in that mm -hmm. spot. And it wasn't until we both looked at each other, we're not supposed to be here. Yeah. And when we said that, all of a sudden things started going in motion in our faith. Mm -hmm. And God started opening doors <laughs> to other things. And finally we sat down and we had a, had a meeting with him. And Jan says, well, what do you think in your heart? We're not supposed to be there, Jan. Mm -hmm. He said, okay. And when that instant, when that happened, the other couple, he looked at us. He says, well, the Kylie's. They are now going to step forward and do it. Mm -hmm. It took us shifting of our faith and shifting of what we knew we were supposed to do. See, there's times we get, you know, God didn't tell us no. We just went by what we sensed in our hearts. The Holy Spirit leads us by what's in our hearts. Yeah, he does. He does. You understand? Yes. Because he plays those things in our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I'm called to be a teacher. I know I'm called to minister. I know I'm called to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. I know that, that when I lay hands on you, you will recover. When I pray for you, you will recover. I know that. Now, if you want to get that hooked up with my faith, that your faith is with mine, that's fine. But I can't get my faith hooked up with yours. That's all of a sudden where the no happens because we're, we're you know, it's not a disagreement, but we're just not there with each other. Mm -hmm. You understand? Am I yeah. making sense? Yeah. God doesn't tell us no. It's that we stepped outside of what the Holy Spirit is doing in our hearts, mm -hmm. and we sense that there's a no. The world will tell you no. It's like I was telling Thomas yesterday. I said, you know, when you're growing up, when you're, you know, when you started moving around and started getting into things, and it, you know, I didn't tell you no. I said, hey, come on, let's go. And I got your attention, and we went and did something else. You interrupted. But I did never told him no. Why? What's the number one word that kids learn when they're real small? No. No. Why? <laughs> because everybody tells them no. Yeah. And so automatically we're programmed that way. We think that God tells us no when it doesn't turn out the way that we think it should turn out. Mm -hmm. God didn't tell you no. Now I agree with part of his statement that he said he's, you know, God redirects us. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. But he doesn't tell us no. Amen? Amen. That's free. That's not my notes today. <laughs> sit down. Okay, you go sit down. Open your Bibles. And again, thank you to those of you that are watching. I know I went off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> Open your Bibles to 1 John 5, our foundation scripture. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. What I'm believing that we're going to get into today is that we are now in a season, a calendar season, where the world celebrates the devil. And they celebrate hell. Okay? And while you're all searching there, and the reason I felt that we needed to do this is, it just popped up into my heart, and all of a sudden I saw what, what had taken place when we first got, Gene and I first got involved in ministry. In, uh, down in New Mexico. I was there, I was on staff uh, at a church as a youth pastor, and a mom and her sister, this little, little girl's aunt, showed up to my office with the little girl, 
Well, a young lady. I, she was, I, don't know how, I think she was like 12 or 13. And, and the, um, the Navajo education system, a lot of it is based, because there's so, people are so secluded, a lot of it is based on uh, boarding schools. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll bus kids in on Monday morning, or parents will drop them off on Monday morning, and then they'll live at the school all, all week, and then Friday after school, they'll bus home, or the parents will come and pick them up, okay? That, and that's, in the inner cities, in the cities, you have more of your traditional school system where kids will go home and come back, go home and come back out there because there's so, so many miles difference between houses and everything else, they just board them. Yeah. They just take them up and board them, okay? Which is fine. They feed them and everything else. And and God opened the doors for us to have a time and a season uh, involved with one of the boarding schools. In fact, uh, we had received accommodations from the Navajo Nation doing that, and we were white. They hardly let white people do stuff like that, mm-hmm. influence their young people, okay? And so we're, we were there, I was on, a, on staff at this church, and we, uh, I walked into the office, and all of a sudden here comes this, uh, this mom and her sister, and, the, and this teenage, young teenage girl coming in, and the mom and sister in tears. And I said, okay, what's up? And they told me the story about, you know, the, her, she was at her boarding school and she came back and uh, uh, the little girl came back to the school and, and uh, came home and told her, parent, her mom and her, and her aunt that they told her kids in the boarding school had made a satanic coven and that they told her that she had to start worshiping the devil or they're going to sacrifice him. Now I'm looking around and some of you are, you know, just, you know, looking at me almost like a dismay. You know, it's like, huh? Yeah, that really happens, people. Mm -hmm. It really happens. In fact, I will tell you, you've heard stories of this, but we've actually met people where it happened to. Okay? Mm -hmm. They, um, Women are impregnated to have babies that have no record of any, uh, there's no record of that child anywhere because that child is used as a sacrifice. I know that's kind of gruesome and ugly, but that's the extreme of it, okay? Uh, Our church was getting ready to hold a meeting and uh, uh, we went and and met a a, a lady that was traveling to talk to us at this meeting, and she ran. She helped a, a young lady that was alongside the road that was pregnant, and this person led her to the Lord, and she opened up and started saying that she was going somewhere to give birth to this child, so so that she and the child could be used to sacrifice. Mm. Okay, it, it's serious stuff. Okay. And so the question I want to ask is, should Christians be involved with trick-or-treat? Should Christians be involved with Halloween? Should Christians be involved in any way Mm -hmm. with worship of the devil? Okay. You know, we're, we're all, you know, we're all agreement with this. You know, we're all shaking our heads. No, we shouldn't be. But there's so many subtleties that the world is allowed. And now we've allowed those subtleties to creep into the church yeah. that it actually happens. Yeah. It actually happens. And it is happening. And so what we need to do is we need to come to an understanding that there's actual scriptures that tell us not to. And we need to walk on and lay hold of those scriptures and keep them in our hearts and keep them in our midst. Now, I'm not saying, okay, we came from a church in Michigan where we had large harvest fest. 
Okay, I believe that there's alternatives that a church can do because our kids are being indoctrinated in such a way. I believe that the church needs to make it more fun than what the world is doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe in technologies and, and so on, that the church needs to start adopting itself to these technologies and start making itself more well-known than the world yeah. is actually making itself yeah. well-known. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is we have this old core, old religious group that's in the church. Oh, no, we just need to go back and do it this way. Yeah, that dollar fifty cent sock doesn't work anymore as a puppet. No. <laughs> Come on now. You understand me? It doesn't work. It will not meet the needs of any of the kids that are coming to a church service today. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they, they know more about computers than most of the programmers know. It's true. Yeah. You 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 have a problem with your computer? Ask a ten year old. All right, a five-year-old. I don't know. But ask, if I had trouble with my cell phone, guess what I did? I asked my son. Hey, I, I need this. And, and he said, well, Dad, you need to do this and this and this. Okay. It doesn't take much. But I didn't know it. Why? Because I, not, I was not a generation that grew up in that. We were a generation that grew up in the foundation of it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. The building. That was the stepping stone. But, you know, let me see your phone a second. This phone right here has more power to it than Apollo 13 had. And the computers that ran Apollo 13. In fact, this phone right now, if you took the technology that Apollo 13 and what NASA had at that time, it could have ran all of the Apollo series mm -hmm. at one time. Yep. And still had power left over. Am I right, sir? You're right. Sorry, we got we we have a technical advisor in here. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's so true. And so now the church needs to get to a point to where they are doing the proper things to reach this generation. Mm -hmm. I, I was wondering where it was going to come in. Our <laughs> job is to reach generations. The church is not designed to be a comfortable place to where we just come and we just feel warm and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <And> she, <yeah. laughs> Teresa's sitting in her, her mama's lounge chair, <laughs> reclines <laughs> back. <laughs> she has the button ready to put the vibrator on too. Okay? <laughs> and, but you understand? That's not what the church is. The church is supposed to come together. We're supposed to learn. And when we learn, we're supposed to take it out and give it to the unsaved world. We are supposed to be different. We're not supposed to look like hell. No. We're not supposed to look like the world. We're supposed to be, get used to different. Yes. <laughs> you understand? We have to be different. If we're not, we're just no different than a cookie cutter bar. Yep. And that's what's happening with a lot of church services. i got to have music done a certain way. No, you don't. You got to have a heart open to Him Amen. to receive what He wants to do. The music just creates the feeling behind it, so you're more receptive of it. This is somebody who had been a worship leader since I was 24. Okay, I've been to a lot of worship conferences. Yeah, I don't have the greatest voice. I don't have the greatest playing skills, but I know what God wants. Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? I know what he wants me to do. I know what he wants us to do. I know how, you know, and I, I really know how to get that to that point. Sometimes I get frustrated myself because I don't feel we get there. But I'm so proud right now. You know, yeah, we're a small group. Yeah, we have half the group missing. It's not here. But I'm so proud of where this group goes on Sunday mornings. And how it's receptive to receive what he has for us. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of it. But we need to take the message out. And our job is to get the world involved with God. Introduce them to something different. And in order to do that, we have to be different. And again, 
I'm not saying that the church shouldn't celebrate things in October, because we should. I really believe we should. But we have to give the world an alternative. We have to give kids, this generation, generations to come, we have to give them something different. I remember the one Harvest Fest we did at the junior high in New Ago. <laughs> what they figured? We had five. Huh? Yeah, five. Yeah, we had we've had quite a few. But I remember the, the the last big one. The last the the population of the town. Are you ready for this? The population of the town at that point was about fifteen hundred people. We had over five thousand people show up to that junior high. Mm -hmm. And all they did, we, we had rows, you know, call them rows, rows, rows of just games, different games. Yeah. And every per, you know, every child that played a game got a handful of candy. If somebody showed up in a ghost goblin or, you know, some kind of costume like that, the parents were asked to, you know, help that child to get out of that costume. Mm hmm that's the, that's the only, only thing that stopped kids from coming. That was the only thing. We wanted kids to show up and have fun in such a way. The following, you know, we had uh, blow up toys outside. I mean, just all, it, it was just, it was a blast. It was a blast. And uh, I think the youth group were, we're doing uh, hot dogs and, and snacks yep. that they sold, and, and they made Buku Bucks. Because, you know, parents would, from work, come, all right, let's go get our yeah. kids, you know, a hot dog and whatever, dinner. All right, let's go play games and sweeten you up. I think even home. the athletic boosters got involved, too. Yeah. You know, it just, there was so much stuff that took place. You know, Halloween's no different than Christmas. Yeah. You celebrate the season. And the reason for the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Halloween was first decided, designed as a, as a holiday or, or worship of God. Yeah. That was twisted. And so, and now they went to Christmas because they wanted to steal that. And the church is more, you know, when I say church, I'm not talking about us. And I'm not talking about some of the churches you might know. But the church body as a whole is wo almost willing to give up Christmas to celebrate the devil. And you see it happening yep. because we're not allowed, you know, where it was once a great thing, you know, Christmas concert in school, mm -hmm. it's now a holiday sing-along. Yep. And there's nothing about God that's done in any of those songs. There's no Christmas carols, you know. It, every one of those Christmas carols are designed to worship God, to worship the birth of Jesus. Yep. And you don't see it anymore. And so we, as a church, we have to do something different. And, and so I'm not saying, you know, I'm, and I'm not saying that if you're going to stay home, okay, lock your doors, turn out the lights and everything else so you don't have any little, little ones coming trick-or-treat at your door. Because guess what's a great way to witness to mom and dad? And you got a captive audience. They came to your door wanting something. <laughs> Hello? Yep. I'm saying we need to we need to take some of these things and use them, but I'm not saying that we actually sink our teeth into the lifestyle of it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So let's look at this. I I know I've been rambling here for a little bit. Did you get something out of all that? Yes. Okay. First Corinthians, uh, first Corinthians, first John five fourteen and fifteen. It says, and this is the confidence that we have before Him. This is the confidence which we have before him. Mm -hmm. This is the confidence. This is our confidence which we have before him. That if we ask anything. anything. Come on now. If we ask anything, anything according to what? His will. his will or his word. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Is that good news? Yes. Yeah. Let's go on. It says, and if we know that he hears us in whatever we what? Yes. Ask. We know that we know that we know that we know mm -hmm. that we know yes. we have the request which we've asked of him. 
Pastor, I'm not sure if I really agree with that. That's why you don't see the no. <laughs> you, K N O W. Okay? Not the N O, but the K. Well, that's why you're also probably receiving the N O. Because you don't see it in the Word. Because this book gives you everything and shows you everything pertaining to life and godliness. Because that was part of God's will. Yes. You got scripture for that one? Oh, yeah. How many do you want? <laughs> but I'll just take you to an easy one. That, that's part of our foundation. It's becoming part of our foundation. It's found over in 2 Peter. Simon Peter's right in here. And talk about a hard-nosed nose person who is really hard-nosed to the core. And take a look here. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. It says, grace and peace be what? Multiplied. Multiplied not added. And the thing is, two times two with God is completely different than our multiplication table. Mm -hmm. You have to realize that. Yep. Okay? Because we get into, you know, it's kind of like planting seed. When we plant a seed, we, we you know, if I put put two, two seeds of, uh, 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 two seeds for corn into the ground because when they come up they cross pollinate each other that's how you get a harvest egg you gotta have two of those right so you put two into the ground and you expect a harvest okay mm -hmm. so we want to multiply that all right okay so if i get if i get a hundred full of seeds so that's 200 seed that's not god's multiplication no because you'll get one year of corn at least on each stock so now you're doubled, so you got two ears of corn, and each one of those ears is going to have 750 seeds at average. Yep. In them. Yep. It's very quiet. How do we figure that one out, right? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's the only way to figure it out. Is just thank you for it. You know, raise a hallelujah to him. Yes. Amen? Amen. That, that's how we figure it out. And you go in here and you, you look, he says, he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of, of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3, seeing that his divine power has granted or gifted to us everything. Say everything. 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 So there's nothing missing in that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's granted to us or gifted us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Yes. Hello? There it is. Right there. Life and godliness in the knowledge of Him. The only way you get the true knowledge is through prayer, worshiping Him, and through this Word. Okay? Let's go on. Through the true knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. Amen. Even when you don't feel glorified, even when you don't feel excellent, you're there. He's given it to you. Yes. Amen? Amen? It says for, verse 4, it says, For by these he has granted, gifted, there it is again, yep. gifted us, his precious and magnificent promises. Mm -hmm. His precious and magnificent promises. He's gifted them to us. He's given them to us. Why did you give those to us, Jesus? Why? Why, did, why do I have this now? Why? You know, I'm not at that point to ask him why. I'm just, okay, what do I got to fix in my life to receive more? Mm -hmm. And be receptive more. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at in my life. Uh, uh, but why, why is this? It says, it says, in order that through these, your Bible might say by, the, uh, by them, just put a circle and a line through it, because the actual Greek says through these. Okay? Through these... You might become partakers of the divine nature. You'll get saved. So he's placed all this in front of you to attract you to, to attract you to him. Yes. Okay. Remember, I said with the kids, we got to do something to be more attractive to them than the world. Just the same as God has done more things and has placed more things in front of us to be more attractive to Him than mm -hmm. to. Having escaped the corruption of the world by lust. 
You see? You see it? That's what that's where we have to be as a church. That's where we have to get to as a church. That's where we have to get to as a body of Christ, as individuals. That's where we need to get. And the thing is, is the giftings, this this everything, all things, that's not just for you. It's not just for your four no more. It's for the world. It's so that the world can see it in you and so that you can be taken out to them and give more of it to them so, so that they can be more attracted to God than to the world. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. We just got to change our mindset on, onto this. We got to change our heart set on this because sometimes we get so in need that our mind and our heart are automatically thinking, I gotta stand by faith for something, and I gotta believe God for it. No, He's already taken care of it. Yeah. Just receive the gift. Remember, a gift isn't a gift until it's received. Yeah, right. And right now, God has a lot of gifts that haven't been received because we haven't received those gifts. That will preach better than you shaking your hands. <laughs> Think about that. All right? Let's go on. It says, now, this very reason, apply all diligence. He says, apply all diligence. Didn't that come up earlier yeah. today? Yeah. Apply all diligence. Apply all diligence. Not just some diligence. Not just what you think you can give. But you got to just downright be sold out. And we're going to see a description of this come up here in a little bit. In fact, let's turn there. Let's go to Ephesians 4, verse 27. Ephesians 4. Are you getting something so far? Yep. All right, two of you are. That's good. I like that. <laughs> Let me ask that question again. Are you getting anything this morning? Yeah. Okay. Verse what? We're going to verse 27. Actually, we're going to start verse 26. It says, Be angry. And yet, do not sin or sin not. Do not let the sun go down in your anger. Now, those of us that are spouses in here, there's times that there's some angry stuff that happens at night. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, you, you know, he, he writes here, he says, be, be angry. You know, it's okay. It's okay to get, you know, you should get indignant over certain things. Yeah. But he also says, don't let, don't let your anger and your wrath go down as the sun goes down. Yeah. In other words, work it out. Talk it out. Do something. Fix it. Okay? That's what he's saying here. Fix it. And he goes on in verse 27 and he says, and. Say and. And. So that's a continuance, right? Mm -hmm. A continuance of what was said. And do not give the devil any opportunity, or do not give place to the devil. In other words, don't do something to open the door for the enemy to come in. Yeah. So he's telling us two things there. It, you know, that we need to, you know, there's times there's a, there's a holy indignation that needs to rise up within us. Mm -hmm. We need to get a little frustrated over things, maybe a little angry. But don't let the sun go down on that. Why? Because that festers and that opens the door to the enemy. And, and that it's not just in a married situation. No. Mm -hmm. It's it's about our political system. It's about everything. Things that are going on. Even in the church world. I get so frustrated when I see, you know, when I hear of things happening in the church. Yeah. We're coming out with a new worldly a new worldly religion. And they want to throw Christianity as part of the name of that new word they really, it's like, no, that's not Christianity. You see? Well, it's part of the one world order that is going to be set up. Yeah. But, and so we need to look at this. And, and we need, but it says don't give the devil opportunity. Don't open the door. Don't open the door to him. Don't give him opportunity. Okay. Now I'll turn over to John 10, verse 10. And we'll start looking at this. And we're going to cover this. for This will be for a, uh, a couple of weeks that we're going to do this. 
We all know the scripture because we've read it before. John 10, verse 10, my translation says, The thief comes only to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah, steal, kill, and to destroy. And I come, or, or I came, that they might have life, and that they might have it abundantly. Or some translations say more abundantly. Or the Amplified says, to the full, till it overflows. And you'll find out here, if I can do this in the next 10 minutes. You'll find out where that breaks down at in the Greek, okay? But when you start looking at it, it's, it says the thief, the thief, the enemy. And you can, you can write off, you know, right off there also, Satan comes. Satan comes, he's using the world. Satan comes, he's using the world. And, 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 and the subtleties that he's using to infiltrate into us and get into what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And we allow that to enter in. Okay? That statement I just made, now you're going to see how it comes, comes in here. And this is Jesus describing what the enemy's work is. Right? Mm -hmm. The thief is, is a bandit. A pickpocket. A scam artist. It's where we get the word, it, it, it's the Greek word, kleptos. Kleptos, okay? It's where we get kleptomatic or kleptomaniac, mm -hmm. okay? He comes to steal. That word steal is klepto. That's also where we get, uh, get kleptomaniac. But it, it pictures one so artfully in a way that steals that his exploits and his thievery are nearly undetectable. In other words, it's saying, what it's saying here is that the enemy comes and he's so precise in how he does it, but he's so subtle in doing it, you don't even know it's being done. Mm -hmm. And the church has taken a lot of things, hook, line, and sinker. We've been infiltrated. And now we have denominations that are ruling alongside those things. I mean, when they're allowing certain, I'm going to say it, when they're allowing, you know, when they're allowing certain beliefs that are not biblical to lead their churches and lead their people, we've now allowed subtleties of the world to come in. When there's things that God says in this word that we're supposed to literally stay away from, don't give place to the devil, and now we wonder why so many people are going to hell mm -hmm. in our churches. Now we know why so much destruction is happening in churches. When we have groups of people that are out there that are so frustrated and, and don't want to be around any church, well, no matter if they think it believes the same thing as them or not, they just don't want to be around them. They want nothing to do with them. They've been hurt by it. They've allowed the subtleties of anger to come in. And they allowed that the sun to go down on that rap. You follow? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me still? Yeah. We've allowed it. We have allowed it. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Kill. He comes to kill. Now, automatically, you think of this word kill as, as the word, you know, where, where somebody literally comes up and stabs you or shoots you or beheads you. There's some gory thing that happened in order, you know, that, but that's not what the Greek word is saying here. That's how it's been translated, which is actually a mistranslation of it. Okay? But that's the only way they knew how to describe it back then. Okay? But it's not to kill as in murder, but it means to sacrifice. It means to sacrifice. It means to, to surrender or to give up something that is precious and dear. Mm -hmm. It's used among the Greeks when they had sacrificed to their gods. Even, even among the Jews, 
when they would sacrifice something to God. Okay? So, so it's a sacrifice. It's that there's something so near and dear to you that you're willing to give it up as a sacrifice. <laughs> Not to improve this situation, but to make the situation keep going. You see how it's different than what, what we've been taught and what we think? Demi's not going to come in and say, oh, you're not following me. No. His subtleties come in. And now all of a sudden we start thinking, well, I'm going to give up my precious time. I'm going to give up my Sundays so my kids can go and play games and be in tournaments. And then later on we're trying to figure out why our kids are so involved in the other things of the world. To the point that oh, i got to go visit my son in jail. In prison. That's precious things that we've given up and sacrificed. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on. Let's go to the next one. Destroy. He comes to destroy. The, you know, to ruin, to waste, to trash, to devastate, to destroy. It's the same word that's used, unloose. It's the same word. It, it, it's... Apollo, uh, Apollo my, there we go. It's the same word that means to loose. It gives the example, it, it, it's the same word that's used over when, when Jesus uh, came to be baptized of John. And John described him as, here is one whose sandals I can't even tie. That's the word sandals there, to loose. That means that something is strapped over and over and over again, and now it becomes unraveled. That's what that word destroy there means. It becomes unraveled. So, so you start looking at it, if, if I can... Give it to me, Lord, give it to me. If I can say it this way, I think it, it will help. But it's an interpretive version of the Bible through the Greek. Okay? So it, in writing it this way, this is what it would sound like. The thief wants to get his hands into everything good, every good thing in your life. In fact, his, pickpock, his pickpocketing or pickpocket is looking for any opportunity to wiggle his way so deep into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. That's what's being said there. Mm -hmm. And that's not all. When he's finished stealing all your goods and your possessions, all those things are precious and dear, he'll, he'll take his plan to rob you blind to the next level by creating conditions and situations so horrible that you'll, you'll see no way to solve the problems, except to sacrifice everything that remains from the, pre the previous attacks. The goal of this thief is to totally devastate your life. If nothing stops him, he'll leave you uh, insolent, there we go, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. You'll end up feeling as if you're finished and out of business. Make no mistake, the enemy's ultimate aim is to obliterate you. Mm -hmm. He's going to take everything. He, he, he's, going to, he, he's going to take everything that's dear to you. He's going to take take everything that's precious to you. He's going to uh, he's going to bring so much confusion and, and conflict into it that it's literally going to start unraveling. Like and promises that won't happen. He'll help us. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the other part to go with it is that it's subtleties. Mm -hmm. It'll get to the point that all of a sudden you stop and you realize, I'm totally devastated. It's gone. That's what Jesus was describing in, you know, of the enemy in John 10, verse 10. But he says, and we'll, we'll look at this next week, but he says, I have come. I have come. I have come. 
I have come. I have come. Mm -hmm. I have come. That this will stop. I'm going to paraphrase it. This will stop. The unraveling will stop. The destruction will stop. The possessions, the sacrificing will stop. And I've come to give you life. And give it to you so to the full. So great. So great. That you'll literally, and I'll, we'll get into this next week. But you'll literally stand there and say, God, stop! I had enough! <laughs> That's God's intent. And now when you go back, you go back to 2 Peter. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Peter, chapter 1. And verse 2, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Seeing that his divine power, his divine power, his ability to take that situation that the enemy had placed you in, that, that situation where we might have walked into it because of his subtleties, because we've opened the door to him, he's able to take that and to turn it around. He's already empowered it for that to happen. And he says, pertaining, he, he says, divine power has granted to you everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and excellence. Mm -hmm. For by these, he has, he has, through these, given to us his precious and magnificent promises. He's granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that through these, you might become partakers of the divine nature so that we'd see a difference between the world and him and we choose him. That's why it was all done. That's why it was all done. And Jesus says, I've come to give you that life. Mm -hmm. And give it to you. More abundantly. To the full. Till it overflows. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's why he's come. Father, we just thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord, that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you, Lord, that your word will go forth and do exactly as you've designed it, exactly as you've called it to do in Jesus' name. I thank you that there's nothing missing and nothing broken. It's all been restored back, Lord. You are the rebuilder. You are the restorer. You are. You are the one you are. And we thank you for it. That the eyes of our hearts are lightened. We know the hope of your calling. Your glory and inheritance in the saints. Your great mighty power. For those who believe in your revelations. Grow mightily in us. In Jesus name. If you're here. Or you're on, out there. And you're saying grace. I never saw it that way before. I always thought that it was fun. And the. The. You know, things, the Halloween stuff is funny and fun and exciting and different. But I never saw the subtleties of how we were getting trapped. And how we opened the door to the devil to come in to literally just rape us. That's the only word I know how to use. Because everything is gone in that. I never saw that, Ray. I want to pray with you. Mm -hmm. I want to pray with you. Those of you online, just go to the Rivers FC forward slash prayer. Fill out the boxes and let us know so we can be praying with you. We get a sheet of paper just like this. And it has prayer. People who want prayer. So we can be praying. We lay hands on it. And that's our contact point between you and us. Those of you that are here, if that's you, just lift your hand so we, I can see who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. His subtleties. I don't want to follow in his subtleties. I, 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 since I started studying this, I started seeing different areas, you know, in, in my past where I did that. I don't want that anymore. I don't want. I don't want. I want those subtleties filled with the love of God. Amen. 
And there's only one way that that love of God comes and, and comes into our hearts and it sheds right in our hearts. And that's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, if you don't have a relationship with Him, I want to pray with you that that happened today. Mm-hmm. So is there anybody in this place that you to say, right, I need, to, I need to walk with Jesus? Those of you out there, we're going to pray this prayer. We're going to, all of us are going to pray this prayer. And if that's you, again, go to the rivers of dot org forward slash prayer. Go out of the box. Let us know that that was you. And, and it goes like this. Say this with me. Say, Father, Father right, now, right now, I come to you, I come to you and, I confess, and I confess Jesus is Lord. Jesus, is Lord. Jesus, Jesus you are my Lord. You are my Lord. And I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That you're raised from the dead. And it's because of my confession. And my belief. And my belief. That I'm born again. That I'm born again. I'm new. I'm new. I'm walking with you. I'm walking with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, go online. Go to the riversfc.org forward slash prayer. Fill out the boxes. Let us know. So we can be praying with you. So we can get some information into your hands. And so that we can help you to find a good church. We have relations with thousands of churches around the world. Let us help you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be blessed. We'll see you next time. Jesus. And Jesus is Lord. Lord.